music can be kind of a slow production process depending on what kind of musician you are. I mean, some yeah. musicians are just cranking out singles like crazy. But if you're like me and you're more album oriented, uh, you know, the the music creation process is a slow churn, you know? So yeah. if I were reliant on only sharing updates about my music, I'd be really boring or not say anything at all <laughs> for yeah. a long time, you know? Yeah. You are now listening to the Creative Juice Podcast brought to you by Entrepreneur.io. What's up, Indies? Welcome back to the Creative Juice Podcast. It's a lovely day here in Nashville. I am a co-host of this podcast named Corinne Campbell. With me is Jack McCarthy, who shall we say is genius. And he had a really great idea for this week's podcast. So I'm going to let him talk about it and why he thought it was so great. What's up, everybody? Looking, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. Looking forward to uh, kicking off this episode. We're going to talk a little bit um, in this episode about some of the kind of the changing face of music marketing specifically for indies and some of the things that we've been teaching and coaching to help indies succeed and some of the things that we feel are kind of the baseline foundational things to be continuing as we kind of roll through uh, 2021 and and through the rest of the 2020s, really, um, as a uh, as the music industry changes and pivots and shifts, I think a lot of this year has been uh, this past year and all of 2020 was really a uh, it was a volatile year in the music business, you know, um, <laughs> with with artists, you know, basically needing to uh, come up with new ways of finding their fans, connecting with their fans, monetizing their fan bases and making money um, that really kind of shook the bedrock of the music industry model. And we got to see a lot of that firsthand um, in working uh, with indies directly one on one, uh, specifically in the indie founder coaching program here at Entrepreneur. So I was really excited to kind of chat with Corinne about that because Indie Founder is uh, the the newest iteration of Indie Founder uh, started about a year ago um, and you know we've seen a lot the team has seen seen a lot and worked with a ton of different artists and bands uh, to really help them set their goals and achieve those goals so I kind of wanted to go through some of the big lessons learned some of the big kind of uh, foundational coaching points that you've seen uh, inside Founder Corinne and how our listeners can work to apply them, you know, day to day in their own music careers. Yeah. Yeah, dude. It's so funny because something that's really cool about founder is just like you were saying, like, I think in IndieX, it's really great because you can, you know, test out ads and you're, you're doing a lot of experimental stuff, you know, and helping people kind of repair anything that may not have been um, you know, to the level that they wanted it to be before they came to IndieX. Yeah. Um, and Founder gives us an opportunity to do that as well, just not as hands-on. But there's something inspiring about that because we're not doing the work. You know what I mean? And that, that's not to be like, we don't have to do the work. It's, <laughs> it's more that, you know, to see other people enabled to do this themselves um, and get a better grasp and understanding of why they're doing what they're doing. I think that's the most valuable because, you know, if a client is maybe out of touch or is just, you know, someone that's too large to do a bunch of this themselves or never would be at NDX, right? If they leave, they have to just, you know, hire someone else to replace NDX. You know, they can't right. then do this on their own. Um, and, you know, the psychological understanding of everything that happened um, is, you know, it's a big pass off for someone to then pick up, you know. Um, and so with Founder instead, you know, I feel like we are seeing indies like really understand like not just how to do these things, but why they're doing these things. And then it results in these cool creative things that spin off of that. And it's like, OK, OK you know, I see that you're, you know, doing this, the fan finder method, for example, which is just our, our typical um, initial touch with new fans via video view campaigns. And they'll be like, okay, so what am I trying to do with that? 
And then seeing them spin off on that, like, you know, running instead of running one video, taking three different videos and allowing people to use, you know, using a carousel ad to swipe through and kind of see a sampler of things. And, you know, so we, we kind of end up seeing indies doing stuff that maybe isn't what's in the training or maybe isn't this like initial framework that we laid out for them and instead doing really cool things with it um, and growing beyond that framework. So um, it's really exciting to watch and I'm, I'm excited to share some stuff about, you know, how these indies have kind of grown through that understanding and, you know, talk about the things that they understand now <laughs> that yeah. can help any indie, whether they're in coaching or not. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, and I think this is actually a great jumping off point. Let's talk about frameworks. You know, I know a lot of, a lot of students that are coming into a coaching environment, you know, maybe they've gone through some trainings, maybe it's been entrepreneur trainings, maybe it's been other, you know, music marketing stuff that's out there in the world. Um, and that can come with a lot of, uh, I don't want to call it baggage, but it can come with a lot of like, uh, I'm stuck in the box. So right. how, how do you feel, you know, as, as we kind of watch the music business evolve and watch how artists need to stay creative and agile in what they do with their own marketing? How have you seen, uh, helping people break out of, you know, framework only thinking benefit, you know, some of the, some of the indies in, in founder. I think the, the thing that is so important for any of us to understand whether we're taking, whether it's entrepreneur trainings or whether it's, you know, there, there's a myriad of trainings out there, right. Um, whether it's music focused or not, you know, LinkedIn has trainings uh, through, I think it's Linda, there's Skillshare, there's YouTube videos that have tutorials, you know, and a lot of these are step-by-step -step walking you through things. And I think the most powerful thing is when you understand like, oh, I am a creative person, you know? And like, if you're just a songwriter, like if you're just a singer songwriter, like you might struggle with not allowing that creativity to then go somewhere else in the way that you talk to your fans in the way yeah. that you develop your marketing, you know yeah, what I mean? Totally. Um, and so, you know, you get kind of, you hit a wall, right? There's only so much that you can do if you're following these frameworks. I mean, we talk about this with the ultimate album launch training, which is also in our indie pro training vault, uh, which is basically like, how do you get people from hearing about you all the way through launching this album and, you know, acquiring all these fans for break even or profit. And um, it's, you know, it's a lengthy process, but if you follow that framework, you know, step by step, like, and you, you don't do anything extra and you're not injecting like, okay, who am I? What do I want these people to know about me? How do I make this a, basically an experience that only makes sense to people who want to know who I am, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. If you're not injecting yourself like that, it will fall flat, you know? And um, basically, you know, anytime that we've seen students coming in to founder who are struggling to get certain things to work, it's typically because they did not do that, you know? Um, they didn't spin off. They didn't allow their creativity to now inspire a way that's like, okay, I understand that my goal here is to make this person feel endeared to what I'm doing in a way that's about them and not just about me. You know, if yeah. you understand that concept, you then can spin off into like, okay, if I had a friend, what are the different ways that I could do that for them? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is that any training, like, you know, whether it's ours or another, is that there's a place where that ends and you have to develop some some instincts and some knowledge that allow your creativity to flow into more things than just your music. Um, and I think that's part of the landscape now, you know, especially as you know, everyone's experienced things at home, you know, some venues and states are opening back up, but there are a lot uh, that aren't, you know. So um, if you were a touring musician, obviously that has not been a thing. Um, but even if you weren't a touring musician, like the, the fan, the customer that's at home, 
they are now really used to experiencing things in their living room. You know, HBO now is putting out, or not uh, not HBO, but these different movie companies, right? Like movies are being released in the theater and also on HBO Max in yeah. the same week. Yep. You know, like yeah. this is not, a, you're not required to go in person anymore. And, you know, part of that is like, oh, well, the movie theaters aren't open. And it's like, well, is it that? Or is it that now people are used to experiencing some of their stuff this way. And that, that kind of speaks to what Wendy was saying last week on the last podcast is, you know, there are going to be some people who are like, oh, this is available in my home. Well, I, you know, don't want to get a babysitter or I, you know, feel like a scrub this week or whatever, you know, yeah. and they might just want to stay home. Um, so, you know, that is something that has changed. And if you only are working in the music and you're not letting that creativity flow to these other channels, you're essentially losing a lot of opportunity to meet people where they are uh, to get them to support your music more. Um, And, you know, so I, I think that's something that we've really been able to see people do in founder because they have that feedback, you know, we can kind of push them (laughs) you know, out of that framework. Um, and to the point where they're just going to leap, you know, and trust, um, and, you know, know that like, okay, I'm good enough. My music's good enough. I'm smart enough to like, take a leap of faith here, do something different and see it do something different than you could have done if you hadn't. Yeah. And you know, that's something you said really like, just kind of piqued my interest. And it goes back to something we talked about with Wendy on last week's episode as well. Um, You know, it sounds like allowing yourself to break free of frameworks for one is like a huge foundational point here. Um, And allowing that creativity to flow into all of your efforts as an artist, not just the music itself. I I couldn't agree more that that's, you know, a a massive part of the landscape today. Like I, I would, you know, I'll get on my, podium about that any day. Um, I know, I I know I often grandstand about it when it comes to copy, but another point, another point that you made, I think is making fans feel like it's about them and not about you. And kind of touches back to something we talked about with Wendy, where we were talking about the idea of authenticity and how that's really like more so a part of, I think, you know, entertainment culture as a whole. Um, but it's a hard, it's a hard thing for a lot of indies to break through, um, right. allowing, allowing themselves to be authentic and not distant, you know? Um, so I'm curious if that's something you've come across as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, again, it's one of those things. It's amazing how we as musicians struggle to be like, you know, what genre do you play or who do you sound like? Yeah. You yeah. Know? And we're like, well, you know, and we get really in the weeds on that because to us, we don't sound like anybody, you know, and we're not that easily defined, you know? And then when you start digging into marketing, it's like, oh, well, this is, you know, this is a science, (laughs) you know? And we always talk about data, so I can't blame people for for thinking that way. Uh, But, you know, it's just as flux, like genius marketers are creative and, you know, really understand psychology and how to tap into a person's passion point, you know? Um, And so like, that's one thing that, you know, Wendy did touch on that I, I really loved, which is that, and, and we've talked about on this podcast prior is that, you know, like having a topic wheel, like when you're doing content, like it doesn't constantly have to be like, this song is out, I'm doing this music, I'm in the studio. I'm making whatever, I'm playing live, I'm doing this music, 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 music thing. Um, It really, you know, having a topic wheel where you're talking about other stuff um, that is authentic to who you are. And it also kind of gives you inspo to create your next post because you're not like, what do I post about? You're like, well, I post about my cat and I post about my music and I post about Diablo 3. So those are my, you know, so what has happened in those things I can talk about, Um, especially because music can be kind of a slow production process, depending on what kind of musician you are. I mean, some musicians are just cranking out singles like crazy, but if you're like me and you're more album oriented, uh, 
you know, the, the music creation process is a slow churn, you know? So if yeah. I were reliant on only sharing updates about my music, I'd be really boring or not say anything at all <laughs> for yeah. a long time, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that can help when you create that topic wheel, because then your creativity is allowed to come out in something other than that music, you know? Totally. So, um, we've absolutely seen indies doing that, just kind of picking, you know, other things that they want to talk about. You know, we've had an artist who also is kind of a, you know, a mixology enthusiast and create like recipes for drinks that, yeah, you know, so and cool. of course that's like a 21 and up thing. <laughs> you know? So be careful with that one. But you know, I mean, there's things like that's that. That's just a legal disclaimer guys. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Um, but you know, I mean, that's something I actually have more recently been getting into gaming um, and Diablo three has become even though it's like a 10 year old game has become this huge obsession for me lately to the point where like I'm subscribing to people on Twitch who, you know, have great Diablo three streams. Um, I was like, maybe I should Twitch this. Like maybe this is something that enters my, my topic wheel now. And and so it has, Um, but you know, that gives people, you know, a, a different thing to talk about. Um, Jesse also spoke recently, um, and if you check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash entrepreneur on the full stack creative channel, he talked about how um, he didn't really realize that his audience was into gaming, uh, which is funny because his branding is on point with, I mean, his stuff it, and it's like retro gaming, like his stuff is all yeah, in yeah. pixels and in primary, uh, primary web colors, you know, it's um, fascinating. It's fascinating that like he didn't intuit that, you know? Right, exactly. But he is into gaming. Like that has inspired a ton of his, you know, his branding and the way that he presents himself. Even his sound. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, he's a synth artist. You know what I mean? And he loves 8-bit synth stuff. And you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, I mean, he recently just like, it just had this light bulb moment like, oh, I'm into gaming. My branding is all about gaming. I'm a synth pop (laughs) artist maybe my fans are into gaming. And so he asked them and they're like, hell yeah, you know? And so he started incorporating that into some of his live streams um, and apparently had a really fun time with it. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that I think we're just realizing that we have to find ways to be more interactive and, you know, make stuff that's like, look, you know, I'm not just coming live so I can talk at you. We're going to do something together you know or, wor- and, and or that was, worse sing at you you know how many live yeah. streams how many live streams have you gone to where it's just a guy and an acoustic guitar and it's like oh man like i don't right really, like again like the third time this week you know right i mean dude we'd all love to be ed sheeran okay yeah. like yeah where you just go live and sing and people are like oh my gosh and like that's all they need but he didn't start that way uh you know like that wasn't enough you know, he had to perform and, and he's very, very, very likable. You know, uh, I think a lot of people would say like, he's not the hottest dude on the planet, you know? Um, and so he wasn't just like, well, people can just look at me and right, not just me. a pretty face. Yeah. Right. Exactly. He had a lot of, you know, great songwriting and he shared a lot of his stories over where those songs came from. And, you know, now it's to the point where he's, you know, a well, well enough known, does that make sense? Well yeah. known enough voice yeah. <laughs> where, you know, people like, I, lo- I just love to listen to him sing, you know? Um, and so the, you know, that got easier for him, but he didn't start like that. And I think that's something that we all need to think about is like, okay, what are ways that I can create something where we're doing something together? And I do highly recommend that YouTube video if you haven't seen it yet, uh, because Jesse goes through how he played a game in real time with his fans and it wasn't, you know, and then he also like had a couple of like, Oh, you know, I have this merch over here and like, but it wasn't awkward at all. Um, it was a really pleasant experience for them and he was still able to kind of, you know, plug some of his stuff, but in a way that was really organic and natural. And, um, when you do that in an experience where people are interacting so much, it doesn't, feel like a pitch 
It doesn't feel salesy, you know? Yeah. If you're yeah. live and singing and you're like, oh, I also have this merch for sale. Like, yeah, you're already just presenting yourself as a product by just being on video and, and singing, you know? You know, that's such a, that's such an interesting point. And I've never, I've never made this connection before, but especially when you're starting out and let me know if this is way off base from, you know, what you've seen from, from coaching, you know, hundreds of indies at this point. But something that comes to my mind is like, when you're starting out, you know, performing out, playing shows, you don't play your local, your same local venue every Friday night and expect, Mm -hmm. you know, expect different results. I mean, sure. Some people do open mics and stuff like that, but I think that's a different story. You know, your band doesn't, your band doesn't play the same venue every Friday night in your hometown and, you know, hope that, you know, your, your, sales pitch from the stage for merch goes well i think that that same i think that same thought process can be applied to the digital space when it comes to things like creating content or doing live streams or whatever it might be that it's like you got to vary it up you know the the very the variation is not then the location it's the type of content and the stuff that you're talking about um i've never i've never put those pieces together like that before but it is that is an interesting kind of corollary. And I actually, I got to give it to like the influencers on, uh, like the artist influencers on TikTok and Instagram who just like, they do stuff to just have fun with their people. And I feel like they're uninhibited right. oftentimes in doing that. Um, yeah. Where a lot of times artists, you know, pure artists who aren't in like the influencer space at all or haven't gone viral, like that's a struggle, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's one right here. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, especially, I mean, all of my stuff is, is gated. Like you have to get to a certain place before that's even an option, which is something that I have heavily considered for myself looking at people in founder. Um, it's amazing how much you can learn about yourself being exposed to so many other indies doing stuff, you know, which is why like you know, the Facebook group is so valuable, you know, just for me too, you know, like going into the Indies Facebook group and, you know, interacting and seeing what people are doing there. Like it doesn't matter where you are in your career, you can always learn stuff like that. So that's been something that's been really cool. Just watching that stuff in founder and being like, Oh, I either had an antiquated view on this or I haven't worked in that recently or this has changed, you know? Um, and so, yeah. you know, that's something that exactly what we're talking about this week, which is like, Oh, you know, it's just changed. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's, that's, um, that's actually a really, I want to go down that thread for a second. Just, you know, that's a really interesting point. Like learning from the people that are around you and working mm-hmm. beside you and not necessarily viewing everything as competitive, um, so much as cooperative and allowing for totally. collaborate, allowing for collaboration and stuff. I imagine that that's something that, that you guys have seen a ton of, um, right. Working with founders just because, you know, it's, it's a, it's typically tight knit groups or, or now going into mm-hmm. like a solo kind of coaching, um, scenario, but that's right. really, in, that's really interesting, you know, like, and I'm not talking about like funnel hacking and going through somebody's stuff and taking it word for word, but allowing yourself to be inspired by what other people do. I think that that's definitely like kind of a, a key to being successful. I mean, certainly like with any kind of marketing, like you look at the stuff that works, you look at the greats, you look at the people who are either doing, you know, something that you think is really dope or, you know, maybe in your mind a little bit better than where you're at. Um, right. And not compare, not for the sake of comparing yourself and getting down about it, but more so like, Oh man, like that's really cool. Like how could I do something like that for me? Right. Well, and that's, I keep going back to our YouTube channel, but that's because our team's been making really cool stuff on YouTube lately. So, yeah. but, um, you know, Gracie was talking about live streaming, like how often and when and whatever. Um, and, you know, she was like, you can't look at an artist who streams like three times a week and has all these people showing up as like, okay, that's what I need to do. Which we've always said that too about major artists. Like, yes, Ariana Grande is doing a certain thing with her social media, but, or Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran's doing a certain thing, right? But Or, or that, not doing, yeah. Right, exactly, right. And so you can't look at that and be like, well, if I simulate that, 
that'll put me on the trajectory to get there. You know, they're responding to where they are, just like yeah. the one percent. You know, they're investing, you know, six, seven, eight figures into Bitcoin because they can, because they have it. You know, that doesn't mean we should go do it. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. um that's something I think that we get distracted with. And so Gracie was saying, like, don't just look at somebody who's streaming three times and think like, oh, that's the framework, right? And so yeah. we're coming back around to that point where it's like, you you can't, you can't use a framework, you know? You really have to know why you're doing what you're doing and who you're doing it for. And, you know, and in the same vein, your fans need to know why you do what you do and who you are, you know? Yeah, so the why totally. and who I think are the two things that have really just kind of, become you know so loud in the lessons that i've learned from you know founders and other indies um is just why am i doing what i'm doing like what is the objective um that i want to accomplish here and who is going to be participating in this with me um and if you can focus in on that i think it helps you then be like all right so now i know the filter is anything in my creative mind you know filtering through this why and who channel um, and it, it tends that's so, to yield that's a great, great that's a great analogy. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> we'll link yeah. to that. We'll link to that live stream video in the show notes too. So everybody, yeah. can ch everybody two can check it them. out. Yeah. They oh yeah. There's two of them. them. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're, they're great. Um, they both happen to be about restream. Fun yeah. enough. Yeah. Because, you know, live streaming is a thing. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think that that's a, that's a huge lesson learned is like, get out of the framework, understand how your creativity can, you know, it, it, because if you start doing things that tap into your creativity, it's no longer work. Marketing is no longer this big challenge, right? There's always the tech stuff, right? But, but the tech stuff you can figure out. It's not about getting a tech structure as much as it is like, what cool thing can these part people participate with me? You know, like yeah. that's the important part. I mean, obviously we lean pretty heavy in the tech conversation, um, you know, and we, we nerd out on that. We love talking about chatbots and, you know, analytics and, you know, tracking all of your t tech pieces. Um, but what it really comes down to it is like, you could have the best tech stack in the world. And if you're like, you know, here's a free download and I'm going to go live to play a song every couple of weeks, like it doesn't matter how fancy that looks. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, for sure. I also like that we haven't, we've hardly spoken about tech, like MarTech at all on this episode. It's all been, yeah. you know, conceptual. Which is hard. Yeah. Which is yeah. hard for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, you know, like yeah, when I would too. get interviewed, when I was doing, <clears throat> sorry, the press run for, you know, the greatest hits release, they're like, what are your hobbies? And I'm like, I love working in many chat. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> like you can't say that people aren't going to understand that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what um, the hell is a mini chat? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, well, you so, know, something, yeah. some, something we talked about um, in that episode where you and I kind of unpacked what we would do if we were starting over. Um, and hopefully this is like a helpful little tidbit from my own experience. Like I'm finding more and more things that over the past four years, I've realized like, oh man, like these are the things that I want to talk about in my artistry, you know, with my mm. fans. I'm interested in talking about politics and religion and like, you know, kind of the, the things you don't talk about with friends. Um, yeah. I'm interested in talking about that stuff. I've, I've also gotten pretty damn good at cooking over the last year, if I do say I so myself. So maybe there's yeah. a recipe, maybe there's a recipe book. I don't know, but dude, that would be so cool. Like, yeah. Yeah, the cooking, the standard for modern cooking is so low now. <laughs> yeah. Like you could appear, a, if you make stuff at home, you could probably do something with that. You know, like I'm a microwave person or like prepackaged stuff. Like I do not cook. It is not a thing. But, um, you know, if I cooked at all, I would probably lean into that because it's actually a skill that a lot of people don't have, which is why like HelloFresh exists or Blue Apron or whatever the yeah. you know, those companies are. Um, this is, so, I mean, it's really kind of remarkable stuff that you think is every day. I mean, even on YouTube, and this is something that we've seen change over the pandemic as well. 
Like there are people who are like clean with me or hang with me while I clean, you know, and they'll go live on YouTube and clean their house. And that's a thing that people are participating in, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Um, And so it is really kind of shocking, you know? And I think the biggest thing is just be like, all right, what do I like doing? Even if it's cleaning, you know, Um, how could I make this fun? You know? Um, Totally. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I don't know about cleaning, but I'm just saying, you know, I don't like, I don't like cleaning that much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd like my house to be clean is, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. um, but you know, so anyway, don't, don't do cleaning, but I'm just saying like, uh, there's, there's a lot of different things that seem every day that you may not realize are things that you can tap into and, um, pushing yourself outside of those frameworks and just being a person, understanding the, you know, why you're doing what you're doing and who you're talking to, uh, I think is really important. So, and chances are like, unless you are being something in your artistry that is not really you, like if you're playing a persona, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Some artists do that. Um, but you know, if your artistry is pretty in tune to who you are, chances are the people you're attracting as fans are like you and have interests like you. It's yeah. just kind of, you know, we are a bit homogenous in that way where we attract to like personalities or yeah, or like, like, like knows. Yeah. Like knows like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's something that I've seen indies do really great stuff with just becoming a person, you know, and someone that they could, instead of being this artist on a pedestal, being someone that this person feels like they know who does music that, you know, this person is also inspired by. Um, I think that that's been something that's shifted a lot in the last 18 months. I agree. Totally. So I have, I have one final kind of thought question for you. If, if I was listening right now and I was totally green on, you know, all of this, maybe I'm just getting my feet wet as an artist. Uh, maybe I've run some ads, gone through a course or something like that. Maybe I've checked out, you know, some of our stuff, learned, learned how to run a fan finder. And I'm hearing all of this and it's like, wow, that's a lot of like brain work to think through from your mm-hmm. experience. What would you recommend kind of as like zooming back out to like 3000, you know, or 30,000 foot view? What would you recommend for, for indies that are in a place where they're like, okay, like I know I want to tap into these things. Where do I even start? Like tactically, what do I even do to begin? Like, do I, do I audit my marketing? Do I not even think about my marketing and just kind of go inward when, and think about brand? What, what would you recommend, you know, having, having walked a lot of people through this? Yeah. I mean, I'd say experimentation, right. And not to harp on it, but getting out of that framework, um, what's, what's great as a, you know, a possibility in this world we're in is that there are so many ways that you can splice this, you know, um, whether you are, you know, one of these TikTok influencers or whether you are, you know, digging in on YouTube the best or whether Facebook and IG are where you're at, like there's all of the, there's all of these mediums, right? There's all of these platforms. And then each of those platforms has these subsets, right? So like YouTube is typically full form video, uh, you know, horizontal, whatever. Twitch is, you know, more interactive and usually screen sharing and you got a green screen behind you and, you know, it's really conversational, right? You're watching the chat almost as much as you're watching what you're doing. Um, you know, we've got short form, you know, Instagram has reels and IG live and stories and posts. So that can flex to whatever you want, you know? So I think really it's experimentation, you know? Um, especially if the easiest thing to do in my mind is first to test out what types of content, like what topics on your topic wheel are good candidates. So, um, because what I can do from there is I can create this content around these topics and put green light warmth boosting on them, which if you're unfamiliar, that's just a very low spend, you know, dollar to $2 a day traffic plan that we, we also have that in the Indie Pro Training area. But essentially you're doing very low budget spending to anyone who's interacted with your stuff. You can set it to be the last 10 days or the last 365 days on Facebook and IG um, or anyone who's been on your website in the last 180 days. So, and then typically I will just gauge how those different things did, you know, which of that content did best, um, you know, and then look at 
the copy variables and is it the topic and whatever. From there, I can kind of isolate, all right, these are the things that people responded to most. So now I can create more content around that. And maybe right. I try it in these different placements and, you know, do a reel about it or do, you know, try different um, types of content form. So whether that's long form, whether it's short and whether it's, you know, the TikTok horizontal thing and more mobile friendly or whether it's, you know, something that's more of an in-depth type of experience. Um, you know, those are, you just have to experiment like crazy. Um, and I, I think that's the biggest thing is first figure out what topics, you know, your people are into, which you can do an indirect way, like I said, through experimentation, or you can freaking ask them, you know, do a survey. Jesse, yeah. Jesse does surveys all the time. Like, would you be yeah. interested in this design on a t-shirt or this design? And people are like this one and then he makes it and then they buy it. <laughs> like, it's one of my it's favorite like, things. Yeah. It's one of my yeah. favorite things to do with agency clients um, at NDX. Same kind of thing. Like ask people what they think. Um, yeah. I, I'm think I'm thinking of one specific example. Recently we, we uh, hit one of our clients customer list with just a quick survey. And one of the questions was like, how do you like, what does the name of his store what does that make you think of? What does that make mm. you feel? And that gave us so much intel on like what the, you know, what his brand really means to them. Yeah. And that was cool. And there was a lot of overlap and, you know, similar patterns and we took it and used it in copy because that's right. what you can do. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think coming up with a content plan is really overwhelming. Um, and in founder, like those are the two things that I see people get like, you know, kind of stuck on, which is the framework and then content. Like, what do I make and how do I make it and where do I put it? You know, um, that can be an intimidating project. And, you know, I don't think anyone should get down on themselves if they are feeling challenged by that because I do that too. You know, um, I think it's one of those things where it's like, what of what I have to say matters to anyone but me. And like, should I just have everything out there? Probably not. Should I censor myself to the absolute limit? Absolutely not, you know? Um, and so that's where the experimentation comes in. And I think this era that we're in currently allows for so much of that because people are just used to experiencing media and their favorite personalities in so many different ways right now. So, yeah. I mean, that's... I would say not just if you're starting out, but no matter who you are, like, unless you feel like you've got a really great content plan going on, like that's, that's where to just experiment and test it all out. Yeah. Throw a wrench in it. That's yeah. great advice. I love throwing Man, a wrench in things. This was good stuff. I feel like, uh, I really enjoyed this, not talking about Facebook ads or email marketing yeah. or, or tech right. or Zapier or many chat, none of it. <laughs> um, it was great. For five minutes, because as soon as we get done recording this, we're going to go do that for an entrepreneur. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> we need our fix. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the thick of it. Well, and that's so I wanted to announce that um, just at the end of this episode, I know I talk about Indie Founder a lot and because I love it. Um, we have tell consistently them. tell them the news, tell them the news. So we consistently revamp Indie Founder based on the feedback of the last session. Like every single class has been iterative. I would say that we haven't repeated the exact structure and form of a group coaching session ever. Um, I don't think the next one has ever been identical to the one prior to it uh, because we just keep getting feedback. And one of the biggest things that we've been, you know, indies need customized, individualized feedback. I mean, for exactly this reason, right? Getting out of that framework for like, okay, I don't have the, you know, the skill set just yet to understand my why, to understand the who. Um, and so that's what we've been doing more and more. So Indie Founder has now been revamped. We've removed levels and instead groups are basically getting, it's individualized coaching in a group <laughs> just so we can service more people, but they can still be inspired by the people around them all the time. And I think that that's just the very best way to do this. Um, so when people come in, they basically do an onboarding survey that's like, where are you at and where do you want to be? And the coaches individually cater what the, you know, what everyone will be learning along the way um, based on that. So um, 
you know, if you're like, I really need to develop an opt-in funnel, then it'll be like, all right, that's, we will make sure that you do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, And then of course there's the execution plan at the end. So that's a six week session. But the thing I'm most excited about is Indie Founder Solo, which is live now. Uh, and essentially, um, myself, Jesse and Shay are all taking on individual coaching students. Um, and this is so exciting to me because this is actually how Jesse came into the entrepreneur family outside of when he first bought the trainings. He was one of the OG founders back in 20, I want to say early 2018, um, might have even been late 2017, like really in the baby stages of this company. Um, and he, you know, used it to sell tickets on a tour and like, that was his main motivation. Um, but that one-on-one was so helpful. And so the way that we've structured Indie Founder is a 90 day program where essentially, you know, you're getting a one-on-one coach that's going to do exactly whatever is your goals are. They help you do an audit. They help you assess these goals and you do the tech work, but they coach you through it. Um, it also, we were able to figure out how to open it up so that the coaches can do, basically there's like a one hour lifeline tech help (laughs) per every two week block. So it runs in sprints. And so every two week block, um, the coach has an hour available to like, if you get stuck and you're like, I can't get this code to you know, dude, like I can't insert this code on this page or I can't get my store to link with my email or I need this help with Zapier, they can dive in and help with it. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about that because I think that there are so many indies who are going through this plan and they hit some kind of tech block and it stops them from doing great things. You know, and I hate that. I hate to see that. Like yeah. even in some of the feedback surveys that we've done at Entrepreneur as a whole or with Indie Founder, it's so frequent that someone's like, oh, I hit this little block and then I just, you know, I got demotivated and, you know, moved on to something else. Um, and I, I hate to see that. So yeah, so the coaches will also have this like lifeline hour available every two weeks to help people dig into something they're blocked on. So, um, so yeah, I mean, Indie Founder Solo is... I'll tell you that my work with founders one-on-one when the company first started was just so, uh, it was educational for me. It was fulfilling for both of us. They accomplished great things. So it was, you know, really motivating and inspirational. Uh, So I'm excited. So we only, um, I, there's only one slot for me (laughs) at a time uh, because we're, we're starting it very limited. So we have, you know, basically each coast has a roster available slots. It's application based. You can go to entrepreneur.io slash services. Of course, Jack's going to put that in the show notes for me because he's a rock star. Um, sure if will. <laughs> if you're interested in applying, you can also mark, you know, who your preferred coach is, learn more about what it costs and, you know, all of the details about how to, you know, go about it. And if you have the resources, if it's a, you know, good fit for you, because, uh, you know, we, we obviously want to make sure that we can service people where they need it. So, um, but I'm really excited about it because the whole program has been super inspirational to me and it helps me like stay more in touch. You know, Jack, you're in accounts all day long. Um, I don't, you know, I run my own stuff, (laughs) you know, but I, I wouldn't see all of the things that I see without founder. So, um, so yeah, I, I think if there's one thing to take away from this episode is like, first off, get outside the box, you know, get outside the frameworks, figure out how your creativity and you as a person, your personality, your interests can feed into all of the stuff that you're putting out there. Um, And secondly, to just look around you at the community, whether it's the indie community, whether it's people in your hometown, whether it's, you know, all of the above, how can these things inspire you if you are stuck in that framework? Like, Look at how other people are doing it and then figure out how that translates to you. Don't copy it because then you just created another framework, but figure out how that can inspire you. I highly recommend a book called Steal Like an Artist. Jack, are you familiar with that book? I am. Yeah. Yeah. We should link that in the show notes. Um, Maybe just like an Amazon link or something. We don't have an Amazon affiliate account, so don't worry about that. Uh, But we'll put a link in the show notes because I think it definitely helps 
figure out how do I take inspiration from these artists or these other people who are doing things I wish I could do or wish I was doing or want to do uh, without just ripping it off? Like, how do I still make it me? Because in the end, music, you know, there's only 12 semitones in a scale, right? And there's only so many chords, you know, there's minor, major, diminished, augmented. I mean, there's a point though, where all of this has been done before, you know, one, five, six, four has been a successful chord progression for so many years that I'm not even going to try to guesstimate. And there's still are just, you know, almost, you know, virtually an infinite amount of combinations of sound and tone and progression that allow it to all be original and different. And so I think this book kind of helps you realize that. And it doesn't just apply to your music. It applies to your design and your marketing and the way you communicate with your audience. You can constantly be inspired, but not rip people off. Um, And you just have to find where you can, you can resonate in that. So, um, so yeah, we'll put that link in the show notes, but Hopefully that is some inspo for y'all today. Uh, We're going to be taking another break next week because Jack's going to be surfing. I wish. You're not going to be surfing? (laughs) Might be a a little cold. (laughs) Well, it is going to be when when we would have recorded, it is going to be Memorial Day weekend. So um, and, and on that note, as a veteran myself, I want to you know, extend my gratitude and um, sympathy to anyone who has lost anyone due to service, whether that be military service or first responders or, you know, all of the above, especially in uh, COVID times. I know that we've, you know, there's a lot of people we should be thinking of on that day. So, um, so we will be taking a break next week, but the week after we're coming back swinging, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Do we have a back to basics episode, Jack, or what do what do we have slated up next? No, we've got another deep dive. Ooh, deep um, dive. So we are going to get back um, into Martech. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we thank are. goodness, because I don't know if I know how to talk about anything else. <laughs> no, it's going to be great though, and um, I do think, um, regardless of you know what that topic ends up being, I do want to share some about some new ads that I've been testing. So maybe I'll throw that on the beginning of it um, on other platforms, including Snapchat and TikTok and Google and a whole bunch of other things. So um, yeah, so I'll make sure to bring that as well, because I know, you know, we aren't a hundred percent Facebook here at Entrepreneur. We do other things too. So, uh, all right. So that's all I got. You got anything else? You got any wise words to wrap us up, Jack? That's it. Indies, you know what to do. Go get experimental. Go get experimental. And we'll see you next week or the week after on Creative Juice. <laughs> <laughs>